Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I'm back with another 101 video. So we talked about where to get your first typewriter, we've talked about the anatomy of your first typewriter, we've talked about what kind of ribbon types there are, and now let's talk a little bit about the cleaning process of maintaining a typewriter and keeping it nice in your collection. This video is actually suggested by my friend Lucas over at Typewriter Chicago. I've listed his information down below. He's got a really great YouTube channel if you're interested in aesthetic typewriter videos, and he also just happens to know everything about typewriter repair. So when I get a new typewriter, I go through the process of cleaning it. I'm getting machines that are from estate sales, antique sales, yard sales, so they usually need a little bit of help. If you're getting your typewriter from a professional who serviced your machine, you probably don't have to worry about this as much, but as your typewriter sits out on your desk or in your home, it can collect dirt and dust over time, and anything inside the mechanics of a typewriter will slow it down and keep it from performing at its best. So when I'm cleaning a typewriter, I break it down into two parts. There's the internal cleaning and the external cleaning, and I don't use the same products for both. I first start when I get a machine by doing a simple check or a diagnostics check. So in the store, I run through and test every single key. I test all the functions to see what's broken. When I get at home, I do the same process again to see if there's anything falling off of the machine or hanging off of the machine in any way. I want to make sure I'm securing everything in the typewriter so that when I go to clean it, I'm not accidentally knocking something off or losing a loose screw or missing a piece. I don't want to lose anything with a typewriter because it can be hard to find replacement parts. After I've checked my machine and I make sure I have everything secure on the typewriter, the first thing I do is I will blow out the machine with compressed air. Now you can use cans of compressed air. I've seen people use vacuum cleaners. I've seen people use hair dryers. I personally use an air compressor and you can get a portable air compressor for a reasonable price and use it for all kinds of things like blowing up your air mattress or tires on your car. I have one now in my apartment. I have a portable air compressor. I find them very useful. That's an investment I decided to make because I had lots of typewriter projects. So I will use compressed air to blow out any dust in the machine. Now dust collects in many different ways, including gunking up in your keys. But if you can get off surface dust of your machine, you're really going to be able then to use penetrating cleaning products to get deep down into the machine rather than it getting stuck on the dust on top of the machine. After I've air compressed the machine or gotten out all of the surface dust, I go through the process of cleaning the internal mechanics. Now, the stuff I use on the inside of a typewriter can ruin the finish of the outside of your typewriter, so I encourage people to remove the panels or the external pieces of your typewriter before you clean the inside, but if you can't do that and it's just a surface clean, you can use these products carefully on the inside pieces of your typewriter. I personally use mineral spirits. I've seen people use lighter fluid and other paint thinners to remove the gunk inside of your typewriter. You want to be really careful with this because, again, it will ruin finish and decals on the outside of your machine. I have a little squirt bottle with mineral spirits in it, and I will squirt it in between the places I want to clean on the inside of the machine. The top few places you want to clean on the inside of your typewriter are the places of high movement or high traffic where dust can get in there and really gunk it up. Those would be the type basket, which is where all of your type slugs are attached to your typewriter. The little slots in there can really easily collect dust. If anybody's ever used an oil product in there before, um, like gun oil or using WD-40 in there because they thought a key was you know, sticking and they wanted to loosen it up, those oils can really attract dust and dust will gunk up those areas. So putting some sort of cleaning solvent in there, again, I use mineral spirits, cleans that out, eats away at that dust immediately. So I use a little squirt bottle and I'll squirt into the type basket. I also like to do this to the undercarriage of a typewriter. So if you can see the bottom of your typewriter and there's no panel there, I like to put mineral spirits in there as well and just kind of clean out that general area. Anywhere where it looks gunky or kind of dirty or like there's black tarish kind of materials there, I use mineral spirits to clean that. Then I will go in with a toothbrush, not the one I'm using in my mouth, but a cleaning toothbrush, and I'll go in and scrub at those parts. It's got nice soft bristles, which is really great for getting in there, and it can also get into those small nooks and crannies. So I will take a toothbrush and go in through the type basket and really work that mineral spirits down into the type basket. If I have a particularly sticky type slug, it doesn't like to go up or down really quickly, I will also move that key up and down to work in the mineral spirits to eat away at all the gunk inside of that area. Now, careful with mineral spirits. You don't want to get it on, again, your outside of your typewriter, but you really don't want to get it on any rubber pieces inside your machine. This includes the rubber feet pads on the bottom of your typewriter and your platen and rollers. You really want to keep mineral spirits off of your rollers. It'll eat away at your rollers, and you don't want to do that they don't need to be you know, gunked up and have holes in them. 
After I've gotten the machine cleaned with mineral spirits, I go in to remove the mineral spirits with again more compressed air. I want to blow that out of the machine. It's really smelly, so I don't want to bring a machine with a lot of mineral spirits back inside the house, but mostly I just want to clean out that area. And compressed air pressurizes air, which allows you to remove things with a little bit of pressure. So you can actually blow into something like the type basket and it'll clean out all of that section. But if you don't have compressed air, you can also sit it out in the sun to dry out the mineral spirits. It's a really great way to evaporate that kind of product. For more specialized cleaning on the inside of your typewriter, for example, your type slugs, if you have type slugs, which are the little letters on your machine on those type slug areas, the top parts of them, if they're filled in with old ink from ribbons over the years. You can clean those out in a couple different ways. I also go in with mineral spirits on a toothbrush and scrub those out like their teeth to get that area loosened up a little bit. And then I can go back in with a toothpick or my pick kit and clean out the inside of letters. But just going over it really quickly with a toothbrush is going to help clean up that type area so that when you're typing, your print looks nice and cleaned out and you don't have in filled in letters when you're typing. But that's the internal mechanics. When it comes to the outside aesthetic, I use a different kind of product process. So when it comes to working on the outside of my machines, I do have a couple products that I use across the board depending on the finish of machine. Now what's really important about the external panels of your typewriter is that every different finish and every single machine and every brand will react differently to whatever you use on it. So it's important, and I'm going to emphasize this, to patch test any cleaning product you use on your typewriter on the external panels. What I mean by patch testing is I mean take an inconspicuous location in your typewriter, somewhere where you can kind of hide it. Um, so any paneling that goes underneath the typewriter, the inside of panels, something that maybe goes under the carriage, take a little Q-tip of your cleaner and just apply it to that location. Let it sit for a little while and then wipe it off and see what happens. If you get any bubbling on the surface of the finish, if you get any discoloration that's not just cleaning off dust, um, if you get anything else that looks like it might be hurting the finish of your typewriter, do not use that cleaning product. I've had great success with certain cleaning products that other people have had a lot of trouble with. It really is dependent upon the brand, the finish, the age of the machine, and different cleaning products will do different processes. Patch testing will protect you from having any issues moving forward with removing color from your machine. You don't want to discolor it because you can never get that back. So after you patch test your cleaner, then you can go in and clean the panels of your machine. This is again why I suggest you take the panels off of your typewriter before you do the internal cleaning, because it's also easier to clean them when they're not attached to your typewriter. So the panels again are the external metal or plastic pieces that go onto your typewriter. And you can use a myriad of cleaners here. A lot of people can just use soap and water to clean off that excess dust, anything that might've gathered on the machine over the years. I happen to use also detergents on them. So I have used Simple Green before before. I've also used scrubbing bubbles before, and I've used LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner before. And then on shinier finish machines, that like black metal glossy finish, I've also used car wax before. And in most cases, these products have worked pretty well for me. Cleaning the outside after I've patch test, I will go in with my cleaner. Um, I usually put it on an external cloth. I don't like to spray the cleaner directly on the surface of the machine for a couple reasons. If you spray it and it's really concentrated in a certain area, it will remove gunk and grime, but also leave a spray patch of where you've sprayed that cleaner directly on the machine. So I usually spray it on a cloth and then I'll go in with the cloth and wipe down areas. Now for me, it's really important to go in in thin coats. I don't like to lay it on thick with a cleaner because it's much easier to do repetitive thin coats than it is to go backwards if you go too far. So I go in with a thin coat of either simple green scrubbing bubbles or some other cleaner. I'll go in and scrub gently, not with a lot of pressure, to clean off the first layer of gunk and grime. All kinds of things can be on the outsides of machines, dust, discoloration, you might get inky fingerprints from replacing ribbons on them, anything could be on the outside of that machine. So again, thin coats with a cloth in a scrubbing motion to get the external panels clean. And then you wanna make sure that you wipe it off again and keep it dry. So I can go in again with a wet cloth and wipe it down. Usually after I clean a panel, I'll also use my air compressor again to dry it off, or you can set it out in the sun to dry out the product from the external panels. Now you wanna be especially careful around things like decals and any branding that you might have on the machine. Anything that's painted on the surface of your typewriter or slid on with a decal is 
subject to getting removed with the cleaner that you use. I do not put cleaner over the decals on any machine I have. So branding, badges, anything that has the model name on it because I don't want to remove that from the typewriter. I want to keep it together. I've had instances where I've taken a cleaner and wiped over the name of the typewriter on the paper tray and it's actually removed some of the paint. So you don't want to do that. If you want to clean around something like a model name or a decal, you can actually go in with a Q-tip and put some cleaner on the end of the Q-tip and trace around it carefully. But again, try not to get any cleaning products on those decals. You do not want to be removing any color from those. They're really hard to replace or fix after the fact. So you patch test, you lightly, very gently go in and clean with your cleaning detergent or soap and water, and then you want to dry off your panels. When it comes to more glossy finish machines, I tend to use other products. So I use Simple Green Scrubbing Bubbles, totally awesome cleaner on things like machines from the 50s with crinkle finishes. You can actually go in with a toothbrush to clean crinkle finishes. Again, light pressure. You do not want to wear away any of that texture on your typewriter because you can't get it back. But on something like a glossy black finish machine, something from the 1930s or 40s, I tend to use different products. So I'll go in actually with a car wax. I have a spray car wax that I've used a couple times and I really like it. I will again spray it on a cloth and then go in and wipe down the side panels, kind of cleaning it like you would a mirror in your bathroom because you don't want to get a streaky finish as you go in. You might find that there's other issues with your paint surface that go beyond just cleaning the external panels. You might find paint oxidation, you might find chipping in your paint surface, and there are other processes for cleaning up those aspects. So things like paint oxidation, I've used a buffer before to go in and remove that oxidation and then polished it up after the fact. I'll include that video down below. I did a restoration project where I went in with a car buffer and I just slowly painstakingly over weeks removed that oxidation. That can happen just from your typewriter sitting out for a while. You might also find that you have paint chips in the surface of your typewriter and you want to protect the areas where that paint is chipping. So around the front of your keyboard, you might have that area. If it's been moved a lot, you'll find just little nicks in the exterior panels of your typewriter. So you can go in and paint match using nail polish to actually fix those little paint chip areas on your keyboard. So for example, I have this shiny black typewriter that had some paint chipping on it. I went in and found a nail polish that was the same color as it and I just went in and lightly painted over those chipped areas with some nail polish. What it does is it from far away fixes those paint chip issues and it also protects the edges of the paint chip from getting any further out into the machine or getting any bigger and removing more and more paint from the typewriter itself. If you have a lot of paint damage on your machine and you're thinking about repainting it, that is an entirely different process. I will include below another one of my videos where I have repainted a typewriter that kind of outlines that process. But that is a very different and much more involved paint repair process than just exterior cleaning on your typewriter. So you've cleaned the exterior panels and you've cleaned the internal portions of your typewriter. What about some of the other spots on your machine that might get dirty from use over time? Things like the platen knobs, the rubber of the machine itself, or even the keys of a typewriter can get dirty over time, especially when you're thinking about the type of user this machine might have had. People were very often smoking and using typewriters for a really long time, and you might get tar residue on your keys themselves, which will turn cream colored keys into a yellowed color or look kind of discolored colored on the surface. In the same way that I use cleaning detergent on the panels of my typewriter, I do the same thing for keys. So if I notice keys are looking kind of yellow and I know they're supposed to be more cream-like, I'll first go in and again patch test that cleaner on the key to make sure it's not going to remove any of the lettering on the key. And if it seems to work okay, I will go in, protect the edges of the keyboard, and spray on a cleaner on the keys and let it sit for a little bit. Then I'll go in with a cloth and wipe away the cleaner in thin coats, slowly removing that tar over time and removing some of the yellowing color from my typewriter keys. I also do this to the bottom of the keys. So I clean those out by turning the typewriter over, spraying in that cleaner and going in with a Q-tip and cleaning out the edges of those keys. This is the way that I do it. I know that other people also will remove the keycaps and use hydrogen peroxide or sometimes um, developer for hair dye to actually clean off the keys and make them whiter and brighter. I like to use cleaner directly on the keyboard because I don't like the process of removing keycaps. I find that I damage the keycaps themselves and bugger up 
the edges of them or I might bend the key bars as I'm removing those keys. So I like to do it on the keyboard itself and just kind of keep it contained. You want to make sure that you don't get this cleaner though on any of the metal portions of the inside of your typewriter because just like using oils and other sort of removers, it can attract dust over time to the internal portions of your typewriter. So making sure you remove that and making sure it's dry after you've cleaned it is a way that I like to protect the machine. You might also notice that your platen knobs, the little rollers on the side have been discolored over time. I like to go in again with a cleaner, spray those down, let them sit a little bit. And then I go in with a toothpick and clean out the little ridges on a ridged platen roller just to clean them out and make them match the rest of the machine. Now you might notice that on green keys from the 1950s, you might have some white stuff on the keyboard itself and it's not mold. The product that they actually use to make the keys at this time likes to go through a process of off gassing over time. And what that is, is it releases this white stuff that crusts up over the keys. It can make a typewriter look really broken and like decrepit, but it's really actually pretty easy to remove. If you go in with some sort of cleaner, spray it down, let it sit for a little while, you can actually go in and then clean it off with a nice little cloth and again go through that process of thin coats over time to remove all of the off gassing. Now your keys will continue to off gas over time so you might have to go back in and redo this in a year or two but it is a great way to kind of remove that part of the external gunk that attaches to your typewriter over time and a pretty simple process to do so don't be deterred by a machine that looks like it's got dirty keys you can definitely clean those up. So we've cleaned the inside of the machine, we've cleaned the outside of the machine, we've cleaned the accessory parts of of a machine, what happens if your typewriter has a dirty case? So standard machines will not come with cases, but if you have a portable typewriter or a lightweight portable typewriter, it's probably coming with a case. And sometimes cases can get dirty as well and really smelly. Because cases have fabric inserts on them or have a softer material to them, they can attract musty smells over time. So what I find is if I have a really smelly case, I will actually set it out in the sun for a little while just to evaporate or bake out that weird smell inside the typewriter case. And that is really helpful to me. I notice that people also will use things like lavender sachets inside of their cases or charcoal inside of their cases to keep out musty smells over time. But I like to just set mine out in the sun. If the case is dirty, I can go in with a clean or just soap and water and wipe off the outside of that case and then again set it in the sun to dry it out. You don't want the inside of the case to be wet when you put the typewriter in it. You don't need more humidity in there, but making sure that you can just clean it off, get things like fingerprints and dust and any scrapes that might've happened on your case off of it while it's outside in the sun. It's important with whatever machine you're using after you have cleaned it to make sure it's protected long-term. So if you have typewriters that you've cleaned out and you don't want them to attract more dust, don't use any oil products in them. If you have sticky keys, clean them. Don't use some sort of lubricant or WD-40 to loosen them up. It just won't help you over time. It might help in the immediate future, but it will attract dust and dirt over time and just gunk up that tight basket again. So make sure that you're not adding anything to the machine after you've cleaned it that will just make it get dirty again for the next person. So protect your machine by keeping it in the case or using a dust cover over it when it's sitting out and don't put anything back into it that might attract dust and dirt over time. Make sure that you're putting your machine away when it's dry. Don't ever get your typewriter wet and then put it away. It will rust away at the surface of your machine and you don't want to rust away at metals. Those are hard to replace. Always make sure to take proper safety precautions when you're cleaning a machine. So if you're using harsh chemicals, use gloves. I never do that, but I always get told I should be doing that. Make sure you're in a ventilated area. You do not want to be stuck in a room with car polish for a really long time. You will go loopy. I promise you, you will lose brain cells. I have done it. But making sure that you're also protecting yourself during the cleaning process is important as well. So that's a little bit of some of my cleaning advice for cleaning a typewriter. When you're a newbie, you don't have to go crazy internal, take the entire typewriter apart and then put it back together, cleaning every piece as you go kind of process but there are some processes that you can do that can clean up the machine pretty easily without ever having to take anything apart and will again protect that typewriter in the long run which is the goal when you have something vintage or antique you want to take care of it. If you have more questions about typewriter cleaning leave them down below and hopefully some of the other collectors out there can give you their cleaning advice for typewriters. Everybody has a different process and does things differently. These are just the tips that I've collected over time. If you have other suggestions for more 101 videos please leave those down down below in the comments too. Let me know what kind of videos you need as you're getting into your typewriter journey. If you're interested in more typewriter content, I do have some more videos on this YouTube channel and I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter.
I want to thank you all so much for watching today and remind you, you're just my type, writer. So it's important to, with whatever cleaner it is, even if it's just dish soap and water, even if, even, even if it's just dish soap, 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 even if it's just dis, oh no. <laughs>